Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Andrew Palolo, and I'm the Director of Member Strategies and Solutions here at the bank. Uh, and today we'll be going over our, our latest case study uh, for insurance company strategies using advances for cash management. So for some background and context on applying this strategy, for insurance companies, one challenge certainly uh, magnified in this current environment is how much in cash or cash-like assets do you hold on the balance sheet to meet your uh, known and unknown liquidity needs, uh, but also balanced by what is the cost of having those low yielding assets on the books versus what might be earned by optimizing your your asset decisions and, and investment choices. So when we think about using advances for cash and liquidity management, um, the, the just-in-time access to advances uh, can uh, allow members, and we're gonna go through some examples uh, in some of these later slides, it allows members the ability to deploy their assets in the most efficient, highest yielding opportunities, but still meet their ongoing liquidity needs. So what we have here is uh, a graph showing two different metrics. Uh, in green, the, the spread in the treasury yield curve between the three month mark and the 10 year tenor, uh, and in blue, the effective Fed funds rate. So what we're trying to show here is, is a rough proxy for the opportunity cost of sitting in cash versus uh, extending further out the curve and investing at higher yields. So what we can see now that he, uh, with, with short-term interest rates so low, uh, you know, very close to 0%, uh, there's a significant amount of, of cash drag uh, or, or lack of uh, return earned from sitting in elevated levels of cash relative to a fair amount of steepness in the yield curve. So when we look at the three to 10 month spread, uh, it's dis despite the lower nominal levels, we're very close to the historical uh, averages. So we had mentioned at the onset how advances can be a very useful tool for managing uh, short-term liquidity needs. And before we get into some uh, specific examples, we want to highlight the two types of products that are, are, are primarily used for, for that need. So the first one would be our daily cash manager advance product. And uh, as the name implies, uh, it is a uh, overnight advance. And a key distinguishing feature for this particular product is that it is available every day up until 5 p.m. So uh, as you're managing your intraday liquidity and trying to find uh, what that exact number may be, you have an awful lot of flexibility because you can take that till uh, the very end of the day uh, in terms of identifying the actual amount that you may need on, on any given day. The second product uh, that may be used is on the right-hand side, and it's uh, our classic advances. So as, as the name implies, uh, it is the uh, a very popular uh, straightforward advance, uh, fixed rate, fixed term. And the, the terms range from anywhere from two days all the way out to 20 years. And uh, th there is here also a fair amount of, of flexibility on the timing. So for same day disbursement or settlement, uh, funds can be available uh, typically before 12 o'clock. For next day disbursement, uh, classic advances are available uh, anytime before 3 p.m. So let's jump right into an example here. So we're gonna take a look at the asset side before we move on to the liability side of the balance sheet. So what we have here is an example of taking $25 million of principal and going down two potential paths. So the first one being if we deposit it in a bank or, or money market account, earning just five basis points. So on a, a one year horizon, the amount of income earned on that $25 million of principal at five basis points is predictably very small, just $12,500. Um, and that's highlighted by that light blue line down there at the bottom of the graph. Alternatively, if we decide to and are able and willing to invest that at a rate of 2%, and uh, depending on the asset allocation mix and the point on the curve uh, that you're uh, looking at with your investment portfolio, 
uh, that may be above or below uh, the, the type of yield attainable. But in any event, uh, using that 2% that number uh, on $25 million gets us to $500,000 of income. So a, a, a pretty considerable difference here in terms of deploying uh, that principal into the investment portfolio versus holding it uh, in cash. Now, obviously, there is a, a liquidity component to investing further out the curve and into uh, investments with varying degrees of uh, degrees of liquidity uh, versus holding in cash. But we're going to get to that in a second uh, to show how uh, liquidity needs uh, may be met uh, efficiently through advances. So we just looked at with the previous slide by deploying the excess cash into securities at a yield of 2%. That's substantially more than uh, what would be attainable by holding it in cash-like instruments. Now, there's a uh, liquidity give up by uh, investing that amount of principal. So let's look at an example where a member might have to utilize the daily cash manager advance to meet some of those intermittent liquidity needs. So the chart that we're looking at here on the left-hand side is an example where the member would come in for $25 million of overnight money in, by using the DCM product, uh, and they would do it uh, once a week. And we're assuming the, the most recent 39 basis point rate. So over the course of one entire year, the cost for uh, those intermittent DCM borrowings is just a little more than $14,000. And remember, uh, the investment income that we were earning on the principal was half a million dollars. On the right-hand side, we can see if the liquidity needs were uh, less frequent than once a week, but in this instance, just one time a month, that over the course of one year, uh, the cost would be significantly less, uh, just a little more than $3,000. So the daily cash manager advance uh, certainly can be a useful way to meet those intermittent, often unplanned uh, liquidity needs without uh, having uh, undue reliance on holding cash-like assets on the balance sheet, allowing for more investments to be profitably uh, and efficiently deployed into, into higher yielding opportunities. Uh, but uh, classic advances can be a useful way to meet both those unplanned, uh, but also the uh, cash flow needs that uh, may be a little more uh, certain and uh, predictable. So when you think about uh, any seasonality that may exist in claims activity or uh, expenses, uh, but then also on the asset side, when you think about how the investment portfolio is structured, and the, the, certainly in this environment, the, the, the many challenges to identify um, uh, opportunities and spreads and, and where on the curve to be, um, you know, not having to rely on investment maturities or having to sell investments at, at a time of cash flow need, uh, but rather rely on uh, borrowing to smooth out the profile uh, can be useful. So what we're looking at here is similar to what we looked at uh, on the previous slide with the example of borrowing $25 million uh, with the daily cash manager. Here we're looking at two examples of moving a little bit further out the curve uh, in using a six-month classic advance uh, or a 12-month classic advance and what the cumulative uh, interest cost would be over a one-year horizon. So in, in, in this instance here, we can see and we'll get into the, um, uh, the, the inverted yield curve where the 12-month rate is below that of the six-month. Uh, so depending on the, 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 the ultimate cash flow need and the ability to uh, leverage the balance sheet, uh, looking at some of these longer term uh, maturities um, will, will certainly still produce a, a, a very positive spread uh, from the income earned on the higher yielding assets ultimately versus the uh, low cost of borrowing. So we had mentioned the inverted yield curve. And when, when looking at the advance curve inside of one year, we see that the lowest nominal rates are at the 12-month mark uh, in comparison to the overnight rates as well as the one- and three-month terms. So this, this presents a little bit of relative value uh, in extending out to the 12-month term in terms of producing the lowest total interest cost 
uh, over a horizon of one year. So uh, what we're looking at here is uh, uh, the break-even rates for a strategy of rolling three-month advances for a period of one year in comparison to borrowing for the full 12-month term uh, up front and taking advantage of that in inverted yield curve. And one thing to note here is that the 12-month advance is eligible for the advance renewal discount program, which uh, allows members to get discounted rates on borrowings at that term. So in this case, uh, by utilizing the, the full uh, disc, uh, maximum benefits from the ARDP, uh, the 12 month rate would be 27 basis points. That compares to today's three month rate at 34 basis points. And what these break even rates at along the three blue, light blue bars along the right hand side, they tell us what the three month rate would have to be in the, the next three month period three month period after that, and then the final three month period of the original one year term, what those rates would have to be to catch up, to make up for that difference between what the 12 month rate today is at 27 basis points versus the higher three month rate. And you can see as each quarter passes, the break even rate gets lower and lower. That three month rate, short term rates would have to move significantly lower in order for borrowing uh, short to pay off. And when you consider that the front end of the treasury curve uh, right now is, is extremely low, very close to zero within single digits, uh, some of those repricing benefits from uh, rolling short term borrowings uh, is mitigated in that current environment because of the proximity to zero. So here we're just summarizing some of the strategies that we have talked about. On the left hand side, we see the, the, the approach of taking the $25 million of principal, leaving it in a cash like instrument and uh, producing just uh, five basis points or $12,500 worth of uh, return over the course of a one year horizon. And then moving from left to right, we see the, the four different borrowing strategies we talked about where we're able to invest the principal amount in higher yielding asset opportunities and as needed relying on advances either the daily cash manager product or classic advances of, of varying terms and using advances to meet the liquidity needs as they arise as opposed to implicitly paying for it by holding elevated levels of cash. And when you look along the bottom there, you see the net return. So when we subtract the uh, borrowing cost from the uh, asset yield that is produced, the net return uh, far outpaces uh, that which uh, is produced from holding excess cash. And as we had mentioned, uh, the, the, the borrowing strategies allow for meeting the liquidity needs as they arise uh, and only paying for that liquidity uh, as your uh, specific balance sheet and circumstances require. So that brings us to the end of this case study. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. And um, you know, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to any of us on the strategies or the member funding desk team, uh, or always you can contact your relationship manager uh, for more details. And we're more than happy to have a discussion and uh, uh, go through anything that uh, you saw here uh, and, and help you put together analysis that, that you may find useful. Thank you very much and have a great day.